Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now it's time to discuss, well, a pathway to financing Nigeria's infrastructural deficits. The SEC Director General, Dr. Emomotimi Agama, emphasized that Nigeria's capital market is underutilized but can significantly finance the country's large infrastructure deficit if proper awareness and investor education are enhanced. Agama highlighted that Nigeria requires over $50 billion to address infrastructure needs, including roads, healthcare services, and airports, and the capital market can play a critical role in raising these funds. The International Financing Corporation, IFC, lauded its eight-year partnership with Nigeria, noting that it has successfully helped shape regulators and market participants to support economic development. Joining us to discuss this is Mokhtar Mohammed, is an international finance and economic analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Can you just give us an overview on where we are as a nation, especially when it comes to our infrastructural deficit? At least you, know, you and I know where we are as a nation. Our infrastructural <laughs> deficit is uh, mm. uh, very, very uh, bad. And I mean, we, we're suffering so much deficit in those areas. Is it in, in transportation? I mean, talk about road network, mm -hmm. infrastructure, talk about communication, talk about internet connectivity i mean we you can just go on and on and on and on so our infrastructure deficit is very very high and again the gap between our infrastructure deficit and even within africa also is is still very high too so i i, I think um, you don't need to go through the street of uh, major cities in nigeria <laughs> and then you see those kind of infrastructure deficits with the, with the exception from abuja where you see the um, large connect in terms of road networks. Um, all of the cities, large cities in Nigeria are suffering from one infrastructure deficit or the other. But the common infrastructure deficit that we all have as a city or as a nation is well, it has to do with the communication, which is the life wire of any economy. And mm. uh, you know about communication and power. Um, just yesterday, we had that uh, the national grid collapse all through the whole country. Those, those are part of the infrastructure deficit that we're, there's no even backup. Uh, in developed country, you always have backup for things like this. Mm. And so that's the challenge. And I mean, if we're even talking about backup, that's one thing, but we keep seeing the national grid collapse like every other every other, like in six months it can even collapse in twice um which is quite unfortunate but it's not just about power obviously there are roads there's so many things that would expect the com the, the government to do for us but it's not happening but i want to ask you know how does this even impact our economy because right now a lot of people are crying and they are suffering there's no food um inflation is at an all-time high so many things but is that does that have any relation to our infra infrastructural deficits at the moment of course, that does. Um, what developed economy does is that when you build infrastructure, you are building manpower, mm. and then you are building prosperity because infrastructure is also the gateway to prosperity. Uh, when you have good power, then people will be able to think of what they can do for their own self, and people will be able to come up with, with businesses. People will be able to plan for themselves on how to 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 navigate their business challenges. And if you have communication, which is one of the key driver of of of, of, of this. Um, um, millennial in terms of work creation um, you see people can from the comfort of their homes can connect any part of the world can work in any part of the world um, also if you look at businesses business can connect within themselves in any part of the world and um, create um, synergy and also you could also use that also to grow your economy so digital economy especially is one of the key drivers of global economy and if you don't have a good digital network like what we are suffering here in Nigeria, it, 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 it shows that you are not part of the global growth that we are seeing. So definitely that have a, a, a role to play in terms of um, the, the, the rate of poverty that we will suffer as a nation because of lack of infrastructure. Um, if you look at also, um, in, in, even within the countries, uh, when you look at um, road networks and the, the kind of um, challenges that you have connecting one part of the country to another, that also in that uh, uh, in in in, run, in that uh, trade between states and between between states and also between farmers and others because again you have to move your your goods from point A to point B and when those infrastructures are not there 
those are major major challenges that we've been facing so definitely that has a role to play in the kind of poverty level that we are seeing in the country mm. now so my last guest um when we were on off the press was just talking about how rich nigeria is that we're too rich to be poor obviously we have so many potentials and in with our economy would expect that um we have that potential to have a thriving economy in the world even but that's not the case that we're seeing right now and um the director of the securities and exchange commission has said we need over 50 billion dollars to be able to put that into our infrastructure um, to ensure that we just have the roads, the hospitals, the um, airports, everything that we need. So why, ha why are we having an issue when it comes to financing, especially for a country that is supposed to be so rich? I like, it. I like the way you said the last thing, supposed to be, <laughs> and then potentials. Mm. Potential is not the same thing as the real deal. You have potential, then you are not utilizing your potential. It's, right. it's not the real deal. So when people say Nigeria is very rich, we are too we are too rich to be poor. I tend to disagree because again, what makes you too rich to be poor is the ability to manage your potential, manage your resources as a nation. Mm -hmm. So the challenge with Nigeria is not that you are rich, you 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 don't manage well. And so when you don't manage your resources, then you are not rich. You are just what we call in local poverty. You are just living large. Mm -hmm. Because again, when you talk about um, you have them um, we are too poor to be rich then you ask yourself how much of the revenue do you find and that takes you back to what you just said infrastructure have not been able to make us know um, our revenue leakages how to block it because as of today um, if you follow this over the over the weeks over the months and um, you realize that we don't even know the exact amount of crude oil we we, we yes. export and that has to do with infrastructure because there's nothing uh, it's not rocket science to have metering to know how much crude you are exporting, how much crude you are producing. Just yesterday, the government keep telling us that ah, we have reproved our OPEC quota to about 1.5, 1.4. And you see the OPEC is telling us that we've only have been able to do 1.32 million uh, liters. And that is shocking. And that is just a pain of infrastructure. So I, I, I don't think um, we, 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 we tend to leave. Like, it's just like the saying that we say that we are the giant of Africa, but yet mm -hmm. we've not been able to prove that we are really the giant. So I'm not of those schools that think Nigeria is very, very rich, and then, then we are too we are too rich to be poor. Or no, I don't agree. I think what we have is just potential, like you have really said. Until you enhance your potential, you cannot be rich. So you can just assume you are rich. You have all the resources. You are not making those resources. You are not making good use of those resources. Then you are not rich. It's not like somebody is saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm working in a place and you are being paid good salary and you're not managing those salaries very well, then you'll be poor, definitely. So that's the same thing that's happening to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about infrastructure gap, about 50 billion, I think, again, um, the government also have not gotten its policy right in terms of um, bridging the inter in infrastructure deficit. Um, even in great nations, even the Americans, you remember of recently when uh, the president signed the bill that he called the infrastructural bill, whereby uh, the bill is to build new infrastructure, they feel that the old infrastructure that they have is is, is, is getting um, old and then they want to build a new infrastructure, um, 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 uh, infrastructure that could be able to stand the new economy that they are trying to build. And in doing that, the government was not looking at, oh, government should build this, build this. They come up with the PPP, public-private partnership. That is what is done globally. It's not in the place of government these days to begin to build infrastructure because they don't even have the resources. Mm. So what you do is that you partner with the private sector. And that I think that's what the Security and Exchange Commission is saying. You, part, you, you partner with the private sector. And in partnering with the private sector, government could say, okay, look, build and operate, like what we have seen happen in um, 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 what we have seen happen in some of the like what we see happen in the apapa exit of um, the, the from um, from apapa up down to two gates in lagos whereby it's, it's being built by by a private company and it will be operated and it will enjoy tax holiday for some time because of those are the new ways of funding project uh, infrastructure decades and not just going to government putting up all their monies um, 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 in, in trying to build infrastructure like what we are seeing in the in the in the um, uh, lagos calabar um, um coastal road no nobody does that this day because you don't even have you don't even have those funding to do that then secondly again Government also should take, like you said, the security and the security is talking about taking advantage of the equity market or the stock market 
Uh, mm -hmm. That is what most government do. I remember that some state have done that before now, um, even if some of the cases are in court that those money was mismanaged. But again, when you take money from investors, then you are bent to pay it back. Mm -hmm. And that is like uh, borrowing and then making sure that you have to pay back. That gives you a sense of responsibility, not when you just have to do a budget allocation for it. It's coming from the federation account. You might not be able to account for it. You might leave it for the previous government to come and pay. But when it comes to borrowing from 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 Nigeria using the stock market, then you you will have to pay, and that is also will help you to plan. You know, so when you are building those infrastructure, you begin to think how you can generate the revenue to pay off. So these are um, the latest ways in which by governments tend to build infrastructure rather than government looking for fifty billion dollars and then government go cap in hand borrowing and then the people are suffering. So that's not what is done these days. You look for good companies, I mean, companies, PPP, private companies. Sometimes some government go as far as inviting companies abroad to come in there and enjoy mm -hmm. a tax holiday. And we, in doing that, again, then you are creating jobs for your own citizens. And in that, in your citizens who, who are not the one prevented from paying taxes, the company itself that is prevented from paying taxes. So it's a win-win situation. And then you have your resources still there to tackle other social investment like healthcare and education. So that's what is done globally. I think what we've lacked in Nigeria is a policy document that will drive this infrastructural uh, deficit through the PPP. Mm. I love the fact that, I mean, you just talked about the public and private partnership, and especially with the fact that the president um, has been going abroad looking for foreign investors to come in. But of course, if we do not have the right policies in place, no one is going to come in, right? And just like the tax holiday that you've spoken about, what other ways do you think would attract people to come and invest here, especially if we're looking at raising these funds for infrastructural development? And also, even with them coming in, don't you think maybe the president or the government, they need to involve stakeholders and say, how best can we go about this to make our offer even more attractive? I, I think you 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 talked about the president traveling, and I, I think you 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 also by your question also answered it, <laughs> because again, if you want investors to come to your to your to your to your country, then you have to create the enabling environment. Yes. And the enabling environment, in terms of investors coming, they come in when you have um, intellectual protection of intellectual property and rule of law is key for any investor to want to come into your country. Mm -hmm. uh, when you don't have that, no investors want to come into your country. Forget about the monetary side for now, because first of all, investor, investors want to guide their investment by the rule of law. And so that uh, you and I know that uh, it's not happening. The president can travel high wage if you don't have clear court policies, especially in terms of intellectual protection and rule of law. Nobody wants to come to your country and do business. And that is the reason why up to this um, moment, the president has been traveling. You have not seen the major investment from most of the yeah. countries that you have gone to. Most of them are still laying back, waiting for one day, um, uh, one thing or the other, or still digesting. And again, one the, another thing that people have not really looked at is that there's a frontier market where they, 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 they develop, um, I mean, they developing economic frontier market, which Nigeria have been removed from that market for over four years. And until you get yourself back on that market, and, and that in getting yourself back on that market is to create a two-way exchange system. So, and that will come back to the major challenge that we've had as a country that's also been the FX volatility. So, if you don't create that two-way exchange system, I'll come into your economy, I'll be invest, I'll be able to exit when I want to. Nobody will want to come. So, um, and in the point where you talk about stakeholder, I think you are you are right on point there. Mm. Sometimes you just you, you just see some um, policies, and then the government is complaining. We have, just have to go back to when we had signed a deal with the Chinese, and after that we came back and say, "Oh, the Chinese are short paying us." And forgetting that it passed to the National Assembly, you approve it. Then we are going back to the National Assembly. How did you approve such a thing? Well, not uh, not to forget about the the deal that was revoked, the Nigeria Air deal. A Nigeria deal that was signed between Nigeria and Ethiopia, where stakeholders were not involved. And you could, they, they recently, the minister kept telling us how, how it was a deal that was going to enslave Nigeria. How do you sign such a deal? Because you did not carry the rebel, relevant key holders along. Because um, government um, is not in the it is not in the place of government to do business. And sometimes most of the people that are aiding some of these key uh, parastators or ministries in Nigeria. Are not um, 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 uh, really seasonal administrators in those areas or around business in those areas. They are normally politicians that also sometimes want to 
want patronage and they, mm. in terms of getting patronage, they get patronage from only their own um, like and like uh, people rather than looking for the best of best in Nigeria to, to help them see how they can come up with good documents. So my challenge is um, yes, we have those that want to attract investment, we want to get it, but again, you must put your house in order to attract those kind of investments, especially in the area of policy, in the area of expertise. And in the area of creating that conducive environment, and one of those conducive things that you need is the ease of doing business. Mm. And with this, it started during the former administration. We saw how we have moved very well, but there's still a lot of work to be done in that area. And that cannot be done alone. That we also have to partner with our key major trade, trading partners on how we can make it easy for, for, for business to be transacted between both nationals. So, there's still a lot to do, but I think it's it burns in the hands of government to begin to do that. Mm. So, of course, um, you know, getting investors to come in, making sure you have um, a conducive environment for these people, that's one thing. But let's talk about corruption, because that is a human element that has deterred us, like it has taken us backwards so much, because corruption has eaten so deeply in our society that almost everybody is corrupt and in yeah. every office there is someone there that's just trying their best to say you know what i have decided to be corrupt and we've seen that happen in the government we've seen that happen with our politicians we've seen that happen so much that they would go to the world bank or go to the imf they would borrow money that is supposed to be used for infrastructural development but nothing is being done. So how can we mitigate corruption? Because even if we ask these foreign investors to come in, most of the time, maybe they come in and, and someone is telling them, no, you have to sort me out first. It kind of, you know, just gives them the, a bad signal it, or it gives them a notion that Nigerians are like this. How can we mitigate corruption so much that we can now have a better system in Nigeria? Um, first of all, um, I like your statement again. I'm thinking I'm just liking your statement <laughs> when you start asking this question. So almost thank God you didn't say all Nigerians. Mm -hmm. um, because I still agree that there are a lot of Nigerians that are too, not corrupt. Yes. They are good ones. But it's just that um, if, 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 so, if funny enough, it might just be the few bad ones that are giving out the, the name more than uh, the bad um, rep. The, yeah. the, 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 the one. So I think for me, that is one thing issue that I'm. Corruption itself, it can be dealt with. But again, in dealing with corruption in Nigeria over the years, you've seen that we want to deal with corruption by 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 by, by strong men rather by a strong institution. So that is what is a major challenge in getting foreign investors into your country. Foreign investors always think of stronger institutions before they want to come. They don't want to deal with strong men because strong men are not going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. So they want to see a strong institution that's evolving over time. Uh, I heard the president talking, I think it was one of his followers when he was trying to um, attract investors. I can't remember which of those uh, companies. He said, if anybody asks you for money, you let me know directly. And I will also be dealt with. So that shows you, you're just mm -hmm. looking at the relationship with the person. So if the president is not there tomorrow, who will you not call to mm -hmm. say somebody wants to ask you? So because we don't have the institution. So institutions must be built. And in building institutions, institutions could rise up when minister is trying to to go off mark, the institution will be able to protect itself and say, look, sir, ma, this is the law. If we have strong institution, what happens in the um, is it in interior department will not be happening. The kind of corruption we are seeing will not be happening because somebody will be able to stand up. But what we've seen in Nigeria is that we don't have strong institution, rather we have strong men. When we have a strong man come into a position of authority, that strong man tends to uh, make everything right. And once he goes, then we are back to status quo. You just need to look at a lot of, of 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 that in terms of even if you look at the economic and financial Trap commission you remember when a strong man was there virtually everybody was being tried and once a strong man leaves everybody becomes as free as they are now as free as a bed you look at nafta when we had strong woman there we saw how much fight we have and then then you you but once she's gone now yeah, yeah we are seeing a lot of things happening there you look at NDLE, you begin to ask yourself, do this drug baron just woke up over the night and we are seeing so much arrest, three point something billion? For, yeah. Where have they all been? And you see these people have been doing this thing for years. Was well, there not a leadership there? But because the, the, the leadership was not a strong man, now we now have a strong man in Buba Marwa, and then we are seeing the kind of result we've never ever seen to see again. So those are the challenges, and those are what foreign investors look at. How strong is your institution to protect my investment, not the man to protect my investment? Yeah. 
All right, so uh, finally, looking ahead, if we're looking to um, reduce our deficit, our infrastructural deficit, what are some mechanisms you need to, you think we need to start doing right now? Things that we need to change, um, things that we need to adopt, and how to just move forward with it, executing whatever plan we have. Number one is each infrastructural deficit we have is peculiar. So you must come up with policy drive if you want to talk about if you want to talk about infrastructural deficits that have to do with communication you know that sector is, is also has its own peculiarity you want to talk about transportation you know you have its own peculiarity you want to talk about uh, 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 um, rail line you know you have its own peculiarity so you don't just make one policy document to, to address all infrastructural deficits that's one thing we need to do we need to come up with clear-cut policy document on each of the sector that want to address infrastructural deficits in one. That's what we need to do. Secondly, also, I said, I'll say it again, we need to build strong institutions. And those institutions are to put that they put they, they are the one that will protect some of the policy documents that we have built. So those institutions must be empowered to protect it based on those policy documents that you are trying to drive. Then the PPP, you can never overemphasize the BT PPP. It's the new way of doing business globally. So Nigeria should not sit afar and think that will not work in this country. We also have to look at that. And finally, also, we have to look at our own manpower. We have to develop our own manpower, which is our own people, which is our strongest resources. How much are there... Um, uh, uh, capable of taking uh, uh, um, 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 uh, taking advantage of these opportunities when they come. Because if you are building infrastructure deficits where you have to bring all the expertise that want to manage that project from outside the shore of this country, then it's not helping bu building the, the, the capacity of your people. So after this is built and operated for some years, then they go, then you see the decay will come in those investors. All you need to look, look at the National Studio in Abuja, look at the National Studio in Lagos, but you have to also, that's what I'm talking about, every key sector will have to have those support. You have to also inculcate it in those policy statements that Nigerians must be trained to handle this thing after you come, not leaving the, your economy to the hands of foreigners to continue to run. So for me, those are part of the things that we need to do. But again, the rule of law must be there, protection for intellectual property also this must be there. Then you build a very robust, strong institution by and by a policy document. You don't need to fly abroad. You don't need to go begging any investor to come. They will naturally want to come to your countries when they see the result. Who, have you ever heard where Paul Kigami is traveling to uh, United <laughs> States, is traveling to the UK to go and look for investors? Now that the UK is even calling him that, oh, want to even repatriate citizens from our country to come and stay in your country mm -hmm. to help you build the infrastructure. To that tells you they are doing something right. So those are part of what we should be doing as a nation, not priding ourselves as giants of Africa, and yet we are not, we are, we are not uh, um, having a policy document Mm -hmm. uh, to drive our, our, our economy or our infrastructure de deficit. Mm, of course, because you cannot say I'm the giant of Africa and there's nothing to show for it. So I totally agree with you. We definitely have to put our house in order, make sure that our business environment is conducive for people. Um, but whatever policies that we need to start to put, we need to start to implement them right now so that we can just have a better economy because, of course, this has a ripple effect. Um, infrastructure is one thing, but it's also going to affect your economy. And, of course, if the, there's development in that area, everyone is going to be thriving. Mukta, we want to say thank you Definitely. for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Do have, have a, a nice day. Thank you. you too, sir. All right, we're speaking with Mukhtar Mohammed is an international finance and economic expert, and we've just been talking about a pathway to financing our infrastructural deficit in Nigeria. We'll go on a short break now, and when we return, we're talking about petrol supply, and Ivman is hopeful for less surprise. NMPCL takes the backseat. Please stay with us.